there are so many cool things coming up. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today's time for the weekly report, Cardano 360 edition. It was a shorter one than usual, but man, was it dense with really cool information. We can't wait to share it with you, so let's do a quick stake pool update, and then we'll jump right in. As always, we want to start off by saying a huge thank you and welcome, everyone, to all of our newest delegators. We truly appreciate your support, and we're really excited to go on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. So let's get to 360. What we'll do is we're going to go over the parts that we found most exciting about this month's update, but as always, we'll link below the timestamps to each major section so you can dig in a little bit deeper about any particular section that you find interesting or you want more information about. And the first thing they jumped into was the road to Alonzo. It was a long update with a bunch of detail, but let's skip ahead to some of the most important takeaways. If we remember from last month's Cardano 360, the goal was on September 1st to do the hard fork of Alonzo and smart contracts onto the testnet and then let that run in the testnet from September 1st to September 12th and then on September 12th is when we would actually finally have smart contracts and usher in the Alonzo era on the Cardano mainnet. So let's take a look at some of the last steps that are remaining here to make that happen. The main purpose of doing the hard fork combinator event on the testnet is this final testnet phase will serve as like a dress rehearsal, right? It's the window that they'll have to identify and fix issues before it goes to the mainnet. And during that time, they can monitor the network and all the related components to confirm its stability. Now, while they're doing that, they can track any feedback or issues that are reported and evaluate and see from there, okay, are we still on schedule or do we need to change something? While all of this is going on, the exchanges, like the different cryptocurrency exchanges, think about all of the ones that are out there, are gonna continue doing their testing and configurations against the latest components. Because if we remember from the original Alonzo roadmap, going through the different colors, Alonzo white and purple and all of those, those were rapidly changing as they found different things, fixed bugs and stuff like that, right? But now on the testnet, this is the final sort of candidate to make it to the mainnet and is a stable set of all of the major components handed to the exchanges so that they can also test on their side to make sure everything looks good. And finally, this will serve as the final integration and testing ground prior to submitting the mainnet update proposal. So it's, okay, let's take everything that we're planning on taking to mainnet, let's put it on the testnet, let's have all of our stakeholders use it and make sure that everything's looking good. One of the really impressive stats that they shared with considerations about exchanges was here, something to keep in mind, that right now they're working with over 140 exchanges and over 100 ecosystem third parties. They gave some context here and said that if we think about the Shelly era, and that felt like a big lift to get Shelly and proof of stake, out to all these exchanges. At that time, they were only working with 20 exchanges. Now we're up to 140. Also, while we're talking exchanges, something to keep in mind as a general best practice before these large hard fork combinator events, if you have some ADA still sitting on an exchange, I mean, you should have all of your ADA in your own software or hardware wallet, but that's a whole different discussion. But if you do still have some ADA sitting on the exchange that you recently bought and you haven't moved it over to your wallet just yet, it's probably a good idea to move it off of the exchange prior to the hard fork combinator event on September 12th. One thing we'll say is your ADA that's on the exchange is still as safe as it always was on the exchange, but if the exchange is somewhat slow in the uptake of the hard fork event, what you might see is that deposits and withdrawals to that wallet are turned off until they're fully integrated. So it can definitely be an inconvenience. Like personally, myself, when the Shelly era was ushered in in 2020, I had some ADA still on Bittrex that I hadn't moved over to my wallet yet. And when the hard fork happened, Bittrex famously now in retrospect was really, really slow to get their upgrade going and get themselves fully integrated into the Shelly era. And so I had Ada locked up there for like, I think over a month and a half. I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen now. I'm not saying it's gonna take that long for the exchanges to get up to speed, but as a best practice, just get your Ada onto your wallet before the hard fork event, so you're sure that you have full custody over it, which you should be doing anyway, but just in case there's any hiccups. Your ADA is safe either way, but you know, you probably wanna have control over it and it doesn't get locked down for some amount of time. But so with all these considerations in mind, what they did confirm here is that they're working crazy hours and working weekends to ensure that September 1st will still be the hard fork event for the testnet, and September 12th, we will finally have smart contracts and bring in the Alonzo era to the Cardano mainnet. We're still on track, fingers crossed, really, really excited. 
So then next, as always, we check in with friendly and familiar door. So some cool stats about Project Catalyst. Project Catalyst just turned one year old. And in that year, there's been $4 million allocated across 160 projects. There's been 600,000 votes cast across all funds and over 33,000 unique wallets have participated. But aside from all the impressive financial stats, one of the things that they were talking about here that was really, really interesting to hear about and really exciting about the future upcoming phases of Cardano is how the Catalyst project truly is working out as a wonderful testing ground for the Voltaire era and self-governance. Because let's not forget, one of the main driving missions of Project Catalyst is not just, okay, let's fund all these great projects, but more importantly, it's how do we do this as a testing ground to get us to the Voltaire era and true self-governance on chain. If you wanna know more about the different eras, including Voltaire, check out our previous video on that. But the cool thing about this whole situation is that in funds like one and two, and even now going to fund six, the actual project challenges, right? So what were the actual different categories that you could submit proposals to? Those challenges were initially set mainly by just the IOHK team. But progressively, from fund to fund, there have been more and more challenges that have been voted on and selected by the community themselves. To the extent that when we go to fund seven, it's going to nearly be all community submitted challenges. So think about that for a second. Fund seven is going to be $5.4 million of ADA that's going to be sent out to different projects. And the categories or challenges of what the different proposals are being submitted to solve all of those challenges are going to be submitted and voted on and the ideas brought by the community itself. It's no longer even IOHK saying, hey, we have this money for these things. Tell us how you wanna solve these problems. It's now the community itself saying, hey, here's the different problems we wanna solve and now let's all of us, for the things we said we wanna solve, now let's all submit proposals to solve those problems. Really, really exciting and we can really finally start seeing the early stages of Voltaire and how the community saying, here's what we consider important, here's some money set aside to that purpose, oh, here's some great submissions that we've also submitted, and all of it being a self-governing thing. Next, we got a community update by Ben O'Hanlon and his team, so let's find that section, here we go. So here's Ben talking about the Cardano community. They talked about several different things, including if you're a developer and you weren't able to get into Plutus Pioneers 1 or 2, and you want to learn how to write smart contracts on the Cardano blockchain, they're going to open a Plutus Pioneers Round 3 in Q3 of 2021. And if you're interested in being involved in Fund 3 of the Plutus Pioneers program, you can come to this website, which we'll link below, put in your information, and they'll reach out when cohort three is getting ready to start for Plutus Pioneers. The other really exciting initiative that they just announced, this is brand new, is a new Atala Prism Pioneers program. So if we remember from the Africa special, Atala Prism is Cardano's proposed solution to identity management. And some really good tests of that are going to be happening with the Ethiopia deal and rolling out digital identity to over 4 million students in Ethiopia's education program. But if we think about all the different applications that can come into play with identity management on the Cardano blockchain, utilizing Atala Prism, wouldn't it be nice if there was something like the Plutus Pioneers program to help really smart developers get up to speed on how to use this identity management on the Cardano blockchain? So they just announced that there's going to be an Atala Prism Pioneers program starting in Q4 of 2021. So Q3 will be the third round of Plutus Pioneers and Q4 will be the first Atala Prism Pioneers program. So if you're a smart developer and you want to learn about how to do identity management on the Cardano blockchain, keep an eye out for that. And as we always say, for all of us out there, whether or not we're planning on becoming developers in the blockchain technology itself, this is really, really exciting stuff for all of us being supporters of the Cardano ecosystem to see how much work and effort is being put in to set these on-ramps and make them as easy as possible for developers to come over and immediately start solving hard problems. Moving on from the community to Cardano partnerships, a really exciting announcement, announcing the Cardano Foundation's first bug bounty program partnered up with HackerOne. So this is really interesting to think about, right? We're gonna have the Cardano Foundation here launching a new bug bounty program. What they're basically saying is we're gonna partner up with HackerOne, a world-recognized white hat hacker organization. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set aside for certain tiers for different severities of vulnerabilities and defects and for whatever ones come in that meet those different severity levels, we're gonna just pay out bounties and rewards for those that find it. It's incredible to think about the amount of confidence you have to have in your system and in your code to say, yes, please, 
Let's put it out there. Let us know what you found. And at the heart of it is this, right? Is the idea about having additional code transparency and code reliability. If we think about now, with all these things that are going on in terms of how do we bring people on, first is having smart contracts available at all. Then is training developers on how to use Plutus, right? Then from there, if we think about how do we get people confident on the security and stability of the code base outside of just other third-party audits that we've done, hey, what if we tell a bunch of hackers, let us know what vulnerabilities you find and we'll do it in a controlled and safe way and then we'll have basically the entire world now in an open source way able and available to do different kinds of testing to find vulnerabilities. This is both, I think, an incredibly intelligent move and shows a huge dose of good faith and confidence in their own code base. So next, with smart contracts coming and knowing that people are gonna to want to migrate from Ethereum to Cardano, we take another look at the ERC20 converter. So it's funny, we were just talking about this on Wednesday on our live stream. Somebody was asking about the ERC20 converter and we talked about it at length. But as a reminder, all additional tokens that are minted on the Ethereum blockchain, since Ethereum doesn't have native multi-asset like Cardano does, Every additional token you want to make, like Polygon or whatever else, is actually derived from a smart contract called the ERC20 standard. So on the Ethereum blockchain, all of these other altcoins that are made on top of Ethereum are all built on the ERC20 standard. So when you say, how do we move these ERC20 tokens from Ethereum to Cardano, that's where we have the ERC20 converter. And the reason why people would want to do this is because you're taking a token that's based on a smart contract, and in Cardano, all of these other assets are considered native assets equivalent and on par with ADA. They're all the same and they're all tracked directly on the ledger. There's no smart contract logic involved. So if you wanna be able to do transactions faster and cheaper and arguably more securely, maybe you wanna bring your tokens from Ethereum to Cardano. So let's take a look at a real running demo on the testnet right now, but it's still a real functioning demo of how moving coins from Ethereum to Cardano would work using the ERC20 converter. First of all, we have to connect our MetaMask wallet and let's confirm the connection. After connecting the MetaMask wallet, we have to connect our Cardano wallets. Let's go to the testnet version of our Dedalus wallet and let's copy one of the addresses. After copying the addresses and pasting here, we have to save it and we have to store a signature of the addresses so we are sure that everything matches for security reason. Now we can migrate our tokens. Let's put the amount of tokens we want to migrate. And now we have to confirm that the smart contract is going to receive our AGIX tokens. And after that, we will have to sign the transaction to effectively migrate the tokens. We confirm the transaction on MetaMask. And now we can go to a transaction history to see. Let's wait for a couple of minutes till both transactions are adopted by the blockchain. So, after some minutes, we can see that the conversion was successfully done and we can see the transaction hash on both blockchains. If we click on this transaction hash, we can see the transaction information in Etherscan and if we click in the second link, we can see the transaction information in the Cardano Blockchain Explorer for the testnet. How cool is that? So this is on the testnet, but this is truly moving 100 AGIX tokens from ERC20 on the Ethereum blockchain to AGIX tokens on the Cardano testnet. Amazing stuff to see this is, we're so close. We're so close to getting this adoption and stuff brought over. Really, really, really cool. And then another incredibly interesting partnership going on. These AGIX tokens are Singularity Net, right? So Singularity Net's been partnered with Cardano for a while, but Singularity DAO has an incredible project coming up where what they're planning on doing is with these Dyna sets, they're planning on merging multi-asset and smart contracts on Cardano and bringing that together with the artificial intelligence work that they're doing with Singularity Net and actually creating ETF-like baskets of assets, right? Once we have all these different tokens that are live on the Cardano mainnet and they're being bought and sold and traded and stuff like that, if you wanna do something like the traditional ETFs, like exchange traded funds, and ETFs have been around for a long time, in stock markets, they're very common, a very common way to take a slice of groups of stocks, and then instead of having to pick a specific one, you just buy this ETF that's for a specific sector, and then the people that run that ETF, they move different companies in and out as that company is performing or underperforming or as new technologies come out. The really great thing about this Dynasets that they're talking about doing here with Singularity DAO 
is having artificial intelligence actually be in charge of what the different assets are that get moved in and out of this basically like crypto ETF. It's, it's fascinating and mind blowing to see the connection of all these different things coming together and how close we are to seeing all of these things go live just in the next few months. I mean, it's, it's absolutely mind blowing. So cool. And this is only the ones that we know about. They've already said multiple times during this stream, and Charles has said it as well, that they're deliberately holding back some other really exciting announcements until the summit so they can do some big announcements, you know, all live at the same time. So if you're even half as excited as we are, you've got to make sure to check out the Cardano Summit, which is coming up in September. Now, last but not least, let's finish with the Cardano Summit taking place on the 25th and the 26th of September. One virtual world across two days with supporting local community events bringing the world together around Cardano. This is about celebrating our communities in as many places as they are in the world, and we've got a lot to celebrate. Yes, we do. We cannot wait. If you wanna just watch it live from your house, make sure you go to summit.cardano.org and register so you'll get information on how you can watch it. If you want to attend a local meetup, say you wanna do that and pick the location closest to you. You can suggest a location if there's nowhere near you. And for those of you that are in driving distance of Wyoming where the main event will be held, we're gonna do our best to be over there. We'd really love to see you there. If you missed our live stream on Wednesday, make sure to check that one out. If you already saw that, Check out another one of our videos. If you can't wait two weeks to chat with us on our live stream again, join our Telegram group below. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.